and wearing a yellow hat. Oh, here he comes. Hello? Good morning, come on in. Ready as promised. Ah, it was worth living without it for three long days. <laughs> I'd rather carry it myself, George. You're not gonna wear your hat? No, I, I wanna keep it perfect till tonight. We're going to the opening of the new planetarium dome. Thanks. Uh, let's get home before anything happens to my perfect clean hat. Well, we made it safely. Okay, now George, when I get back, we're going right to the planetarium, so take a bath. There'll be photographers there. I want you to look clean and fluffy. George was going to take a bath, just like he was told. Sure was a perfect hat. Who could resist trying it on? George wanted Compass to see him in the yellow hat. It'd only take a second. George saw the hat fly this way, but it disappeared. <laughs> the hat was back home and still perfect. Almost. George removed the piece of branch as carefully as any surgeon working on any yellow hat could. Okay, there was just a tiny thread there. No problem. Maybe he needed to pull harder. Or maybe it had to be cut off. George had forgotten that the last time he used his safety scissors was to cut his strawberry jam and banana sandwich. It was only a small smudge. All he had to do was clean it off. This stiff brush got the grill sparkling like new every time, and the grill got dirtier than the hat. <laughs> He may have scrubbed too hard. When I get back, we're going right to the planetarium. George had to do something fast. <laughs> oh, 
Hello, can I help you? I have a drawn up a plan. New hoses, fresh topsoil, more plants! <laughs> but, Chef, where will we expand to? The reason George oh. liked their garden so much was that it was right in the middle of the city. Hey, the reason you need more veggies is that you use so many to experiment. I must experiment! How else can I perfect my recipe for the perfect Giardino burger? I thought those two were great. Well, they were. <laughs> but only great, not perfect. <laughs> the firehouse picnic is in one hour. Can you get it perfect in one hour? I must, for I am Piscetti! So, what's gonna make this perfect? Onion? Garlic? Onion? No, no, no! Garlic! <laughs> Onion? Okay, let's try it. Giorgio, you have helped me find the perfect mixture! Oh. <laughs> These are my recipes. I write down how I make my food, so I can make it the same way every time. Happy with the recipe, Chef Pischetti grilled a test burger. Wait, I left out the pepper! Where is my grinder? Netty, come here! Tell me what you think of this. Be honest. All of my Giardino burger ingredients came from our garden, Giorgio. Taste it, taste it! Mmm, <laughs> see, this is perfect. <laughs> you're, you're not just making those yummy sounds to be nice, right? I'm your wife and he's a monkey. If we're not honest, who is? <laughs> so, Chef Pischetti quickly made enough burger patties for the firefighter's picnic. Please put this on the back of my truck while I get my grill ready. George put the box on the truck right outside the restaurant. Ooh, ah! <sighs> but he didn't know there were two trucks out there. <laughs> Hi! Hey! <laughs> Look at this monkey waving at me. Monkeys are so friendly. <laughs> Oh, Nettie, if everyone does not love those Giardino burgers, I will never cook again. Even if they don't, you have a book full of other great recipes. I don't care. If anything at all goes wrong, I'm gonna hang up my big white head forever. Please relax. They will love them. George couldn't tell him something went wrong. <gasps> and maybe he didn't have to. If that book showed the chef how to make the burgers, George could use it too and make burgers that would be exactly the same. The ingredients came from the garden. Here were pictures of things from the garden, so he had obviously found the right recipe. First, he gathered his ingredients. Then he was ready to mix them 
And though he wanted to follow the recipe precisely, The pyramid sort of enhances the pinkness, don't you think? Mm. I'm working on a rhombus shape, but it keeps falling over. A rhombus? It's a work in progress. Anyway, welcome to Kaylee's Candies. I'm Kaylee. We'd like four small boxes. Great! This is my first order today. No one could wait till they got home to try the chocolates. Ooh. Hey! <laughs> hey, George's box has four, not six. You got shortchanged. He can have two of mine. I just wanted to taste anyway. So can I have your other three? George didn't think it was fair for anyone to sacrifice. <laughs> there was only one right thing to do. Uh, oh, nuts. <coughs> oh, you want to buy two more? <laughs> You're missing two. <laughs> I know you didn't eat them. <laughs> <laughs> you most certainly haven't eaten any chocolate. Boy, you sure have nice teeth. <laughs> Pick any two you want. Sorry I shortchanged you. I put some of these boxes together at home and my cat distracts me. <laughs> Dear, I need to pick up more stock, but I can't just leave. Hey, would you mind watching the counter? <laughs> You're obviously extremely honest, and I've hardly had any business all day. All you have to do is watch the chocolates while I'm gone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mysterious rhombus. George wondered if he could make a rhombus. It didn't seem hard. <laughs> Why did other shapes stack better? Maybe they went together by shape, not color. George concentrated on his work. <clears throat> George hadn't expected any customers. I want a box of chocolates for my wife. Do you have mints? Are these mints? Well, what are those? <laughs> Uh, that doesn't look like a mint. The next blue one had the same filling, and it still wasn't mint. Well, don't you have a flavor chart? Uh, look, I, I have more shopping to do. I'll be back for those mints. A mint had to be somewhere. George realized the candies that looked alike had the same filling. So he wouldn't have to bite all of them to find a mint, just one of each. Hi, I'd like eight pinks and four greens in two boxes. Um, I said eight pinks and four greens in two boxes. Wasn't that what he just did? Oh, what colorful candies. Uh, I want a pink one. 
<laughs> George wasn't thinking about funny shorts now. He needed a new soccer ball. And if a lemonade stand worked for the boy with the yellow hat, it could work for George. <laughs> hey, George. Whew, it's a real scorcher, huh? You want a lemon crate? Sure, go right ahead. <laughs> George now had his very own lemonade stand. This was pretty easy. Whew. Wow, is it ever hot? Hey, is that lemonade? <laughs> Thanks, but I can't drink all that. Don't you have any cups? <laughs> That's still a lot. How about... There, that's a good amount. <sighs> George never knew you could make one cup of lemonade into two. Delicious! Let me give you a little something. <laughs> what a great business. George wondered why everyone didn't have a lemonade stand. Here you go. Thanks. <laughs> He wasn't sure how this was going to work, but George wouldn't give up while he still had lemonade left. George didn't speak dog or cat, but he knew begging when he saw it. He couldn't give them too much, because this lemonade was going to get him a soccer ball. But Charky and Gnocchi didn't know George's plan. They were just thirsty. <laughs> Ooh, I'd like some lemonade. Or maybe not. <laughs> Can I give you some advice? <laughs> People prefer unlicked lemonade. <laughs> George decided to set up where no one knew of the licking incident. George, I sell the same lemonade. <laughs> How would you like it if I came to your house and did monkey stuff before you could get to it? <laughs> Unfortunately, some people didn't want competition. Some people were just too busy. For you, a brand new soccer ball. Oh. <gasps> wow, you guys are fantastic! Let's go play soccer. <laughs> Let's go! That was great. Thanks for the ball. And some people had soccer balls. 
George was ready to quit. And since scientists would probably be very grateful, George decided he was just the monkey to count all the stars. The most important rule in star counting was keeping track. George marked each star down on his pad. The two most important rules in star counting were knowing the difference between stars and lightning bugs and keeping track. Third rule, the other two rules don't matter if you don't stay awake. Because when you come back the next night, you can't tell which stars were counted or uncounted. So last night's count can't count. And you have to start all over. The only solution, counting them all fast before you fall asleep. Like this. One, two, three, four, five. 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 But George wasn't fast enough. <sighs> Morning, fellas! Oh, uh, hi, Bill. Uh, George was up late counting stars. Too bad you can't count them now, huh? They're always there, you know. We just can't see him on account of the sun being so bright. <laughs> George wasn't so sure about that. He wondered what really happened to stars during the day. Maybe they slept. Or maybe they got blown out like candles. And then again, maybe there was a guy named Lenny who just pulled a switch. Wherever they went, you can't count something that isn't there. George wasn't going to quit. There had to be a way to count stars and go to sleep, too. He just had to figure it out. Ooh. Ah. Ah. The big upside-down cap. It could be a placekeeper. He could count the stars below it until he had them all, then move to the other sides. He had a system. <laughs> oh, is that it for the night, George? Soon, George had made real progress in star counting. And since he had a system, when they got to the city, he'd keep counting right where he left off. Well, big hot city, here we come. The city wasn't just hot. It was the hottest day in five years. Oh, I can't wait to get into the cool, air-conditioned lobby. Whoa! Hey, it's, it's roasting in here. Is the air conditioning broken? Nope! I'm not allowed to use it. <sighs> and I have to ask you to keep yours turned off in your apartment, too. <laughs> well, too many air conditioners running at once uses so much electricity, George. It can cause the power in the whole city to shut down. And that's called a blackout. <laughs> A 
right on time as usual. What didn't you bring? <laughs> oh, George. Hello. <laughs> Have a seat in the waiting room. I'll call you when the doctor's ready. George learned that the thing you need most in a doctor's waiting room is patience. Huh? A mysterious sound. George listened as quietly as he could. Dr. Baker will see you now. Oh, great. Come on, George. We're finally getting out of the waiting room. <laughs> George gave up hope of hearing any mystery sound past that sneezing. I'm still waiting for Dr. Gesund. Well, I'm sure he'll be right with you. Excuse me, has Dr. Gesund seen you yet? No. Where is he? He should be right with you. <laughs> You're waiting for Dr. Gesund, too? <coughs> he should be right with you. Oh, hi, Doctor. You remember George? <laughs> How could I forget? Before your last checkup, I never knew the x-ray machine fit out the window. Huh? Uh <laughs> Dr. Baker, have you seen Dr. Gesund? His patients are waiting. Mm, no, you should check the x-ray room. And you should take off your shirt for the examination. Yeah, sure, Doc. George thought he'd like to be a doctor, because Dr. Baker seemed so smart. And he got to wear a really great white coat. Okay, let's get started. Up in the scale. Whoa. I think you need to cut out the desserts. You've gained some weight. What? I have maybe one donut a month. I run marathons. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> ah, same as last year. Whew. This is how I check his reflexes, George. Um, my knee's starting to get sore. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I never get to play with a monkey. Dr. Gesund. Uh... Okay, take a long, deep breath. <sighs> um... oh, I don't like the sound of that breathing. No, I, um, George was... Whoa. <laughs> Ever used a stethoscope, George? Huh? I use it to hear things that I can't see. <laughs> That's the sound of my heart. <laughs> you can play with your heart while we go to the x-ray room. Not everything had a heartbeat. <laughs> but George found sounds he hadn't noticed with his bare ears. Doctor coat just didn't sound the same without a doctor in it. <laughs> this part of the couch made a different sound. <laughs> uh, 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 
that wasn't the couch. It sounded big. It sounded heavy. And it came from up there. You must have heard our new neighbor walking around. He moved in last week. What George had heard seemed heavier than footsteps. What are you doing? George, you must have heard our neighbor walking. That, that's all it could be. It's not like he's got some wild animal up there. The man with the yellow hat lived with George. So why couldn't the new neighbor live with an animal? What kind? <laughs> of course, the new neighbor had brought home an elephant. <laughs> The man with the yellow hat had to hear this. <laughs> George? <laughs> you, you dreamt about an elephant? books before you go to sleep, George. They're obviously giving you strange dreams. This is better bedtime reading. The Happy Sleepy Monkey. Uh, good night. This new sound certainly wasn't an elephant walking around. It was an elephant that was doing what? Sleep at all last night. George never realized there were so many sounds in the world. He'd never listened hard enough. to the apartment upstairs, where the new neighbor lived, with his elephant. <laughs> George, what are you doing? George, don't spy on our new neighbor, please. How about when I get home, we go up and introduce... A perfect time for a trip. Ooh, ooh. 
Bottles and newspapers went to the basement. But some things had to be taken to the recycling center. <laughs> hey, looks like you could use a hand. Or maybe another foot. I'm guessing you're going the same way I am. I have to pick up a package for Betsy. The recycling center's right next door. Stick it all in Betsy's wagon. I'll give you a lift. It's gonna be easier pushing you downhill. George, are you okay? <laughs> the wheel! I'll get it! Boy, rolled a long way. I bet you could get it to roll from here to the other end of the park if you wanted. Might even set some sort of wheel rolling record. Say, what do you think? For the record? <laughs> it's really going, it's, it's... Gone! Hurry, after it! It be. <laughs> oh my gosh, the package place will be closing soon. Come on, we'll find the wheel later. <laughs> Kick! <laughs> this isn't so bad, as long as we keep the weight. Kick! <laughs> over the back wheels and you keep kick <laughs> kicking the other wheel back in we'll be there in hey we're here with time to spare our problems are over oh. Oh, this is gonna be a problem <laughs> George, let's take your stuff to the recycling center. Then we'll have room in the wagon. Ah. Hey, what are you doing, George? <laughs> that won't work. It's from a baby carriage. It's for babies. I got something better. <laughs> 